before anybody gets mad. Notice where I'm tapping, where there's structure along the entire series of webs. Definitely a little carbon and crud underneath these things. There is no up and down motion, which is nice. Ooh, the goop special. This thing definitely got wet. You can see the discoloration on the crank there. But, you know, oil does its job. Everything looks fine. The bearings actually look really good. So, you know, we'll see about putting new bearings in it for sure. I know it can seem alarming, but, you know, ultimately, all of this is just fine. Just needs to be cleaned. Still have to inspect the bore. We're definitely gonna give it a hone while I'm here. Got new rings for it, so it'll be fresh. been continuing disassembly here got the uh, oil pump pickup screen here and that is filled with junk so it's got a lot of uh, little pieces of debris in it I think that thing was probably clear and then it got filled with water somehow and anyway just a lot of sediment settled in the bottom there obviously you can see kind of the halfway point on the crank you know, all the, all the metal surfaces, I mean, these were all coated in oil, so there's really, there's no issue. This will clean up just fine. Clutch basket looks amazing. You know, the cylinder looks pretty decent. I think there, it definitely got a little bit of water in that, and it sat for, you know, who knows how long. There's no rust. There's just evidence of water spotting in that, so I think a ball hone will clean that right up. But uh, overall, the bearings, they're not new, but they don't look bad, but I will look at replacing those. So, got to pull the codes off the bottom of the engine right here. And yeah, I'm just starting to bag some stuff up. Keep it organized. Starting system, shifting hardware. 
Cam Shaft, Cam, Cam Chain, Cam Guides, or Cam Chain Guides. So we're just gonna work on getting this thing cleaned up, getting my workbench back. So yeah, overall not too bad. All right, as you see, we have the upper case half of the XS400 engine, and I want to show you guys a little bit of damage that I found here. This thing has had a chain skip off of it, so you can see this area here is actually broken off. I'm not sure how far that would extend in stock form, but you can see these massive gouges right here. And if I stick a flashlight behind here, you can see that, you can see that light. So that chain has come off and caused damage right there. Now this is just the recess for the starter. So it's not like this has to be oil tight. I mean, there's actually a gap right here to vent any water or moisture that, that accumulates in there and that just drops it down uh, kind of within the sprocket cover. But I would like to go ahead and weld this back up, just kind of smooth it out, build it back up again, and then, I don't know, I might put a little weld right there. I don't know how, how good I can really get it, but uh, you know, we got the TIG set up, so we got AC going here, and we're just gonna kind of get after it and see what happens. Okay, well that went really well. That was only one pass with the welds and then just sanded it down and there's really, I mean there's a couple tiny little pits but for this type of thing, um, this isn't retaining any liquids or anything like that and it's not super structural so I'm not too worried about that. And then as far as over here, again, I have no idea how far this is built up. So I just kind of cleaned up the ends and just, I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then on the inside, it's looking pretty good in there too. Just have it ground down a little bit just so I know there's room for the starter to fit in there. But as of now, I can go ahead and continue cleaning up this case. I got I to gotta fight a little bit today to get the uh, base gasket off of here. And then I think I'm going to go and just take the rest of the engine and just have it vapor honed. Mine is, mine does work, but the problem is that compressor over there. I don't have the volume needed to just A for the pressure and then the volume needed to, you know, do cases. I can do small stuff, but um, I have a person who has a larger unit and they can clean this thing up really good. So yeah, that went well. Well, we are on the XS400 here, and now it's time to start assembling this engine. So we got to do a few things first. So beyond cleaning, we have to address this bore. So maybe a little bit hard to see, but there is some water spotting right there. The bore itself looks pretty good. You can see there's still a lot of cross hatching, but then you look down there 
And this thing had sat for a while. Obviously, you saw as we dug this thing apart, there was evidence of water being in the engine. So we are going to uh, ball hone it. So this is a 320 grit uh, brush research technology. This is a three inch diameter. So you wanna size these things about an, a quarter to half inch past the diameter of your bore. That way it has the right kind of tension to it. So we are going to use some motor oil, slather it in here, and then Seth is going to do the important work. So time to demonstrate. So I've seen people use like WD-40 and stuff like that, but I think it's better to use an actual lubricant, like an actual oil, how they do at these shops. So, yeah. So the important thing is that you want to enter and exit while moving. You don't want to just put it in there, stop. So you get it going and then just kind of go for it. Go for it. Go in, 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 in. You gotta have that motion, in and out. Yep, and just keep that same motion. Slower on the drill, and then faster in the motion. Faster up and down. Yeah. A little faster on the drill. Yeah. All right, go ahead and pull it out. Hit the paper towel with that, clean the bore out, and see what it looks like. Looks like goo. Definitely an improvement already. Still got a little bit of a line on it. Yeah, it's this, we can't expect perfection right here. But we'll keep working at it. good yeah it's but. looking a lot better it's a very similar pattern i mean much gooder i i mean damn near just gone just well expected looks brand new yeah you know we'll we'll check the ring end gap and stuff but you want to do it as minimal as possible because you are taking away material on the bore right slowly but surely but yeah that's looking good Very consistent surface finish. It's a messy job. All right, we got the XS400 engine here, getting ready to throw some primer on this thing. So very clean, everything's taped off. The covers are on it just because that's, you know, it masks itself. They're all going the same color anyway. We have the super specialized ladder slash pole with safety wire. Patent pending. Patent pending. I have done this so many times. This is kind of my go-to method. So as far as prep is concerned, I don't know if you guys care. I know everybody's probably gonna do it differently, but first we kind of scotch bright that thing after it's been cleaned. Then I'll hit it with acetone. And then, you know, we're wearing gloves too. And after that, I will hit it with <clears throat> the torch, let everything flash, you know, get rid of all the moisture. And then now we're getting ready to hit it with a prep saw. And then we'll be ready for paint. And then for paint, I'm gonna use some Dupacolor. I've used this stuff in the past. Some regular engine primer. And then on this one, we're going with the 1615 aluminum so it's gonna be a nice bright kind of factory looking finish and then instead of buying the garbage freaking duplicolor clear we're gonna use a spray max 2k gloss glamour clear this stuff is awesome but you got to really pay attention to how you use this so yeah i'm tired of having that paint just chip or you know not be fuel resistant so this stuff is fuel resistant you can polish it it's really good stuff
to start wiping. It smells nice. Yeah, it does. I like that. It's the pleasant part of the job. Can I get that in like a car air freshener? What's that one polish that smells amazing? Um, what type of polishing is it doing? It's, it's just that spray polish. Oh, like that Honda spray paint yeah. bottle? Yeah. yeah. That stuff is awesome. The, um, oh, it's a blue bottle. I think it's Lucas spray, spray wax or quick detailer for cars. It mm -hmm. smells like bubble gum. That's, that's, that's the jam. What's that one window cleaner? The blue and white can or yeah. Windex? Yeah, the blue and white can. Just I think glass, like glass cleaner. Yeah, it, it, it smells really good too. It works better as well. It's mm -hmm. probably because of the smell. I guarantee it. Now, luckily we have not necessarily a rough surface, but the sandblasting and then just kind of hitting it with a little bit of Scotch-Brite creates a really good surface to paint for, for paint to adhere to. So this will definitely go on well. A couple flips. You know. Yeah, 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 like respirators and stuff. Like, guys, I know. You said it, not me. I'm holding my breath this entire time. Little did you know he's the world's most advanced breath holder. I actually hold the record for the deepest free dive. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, per the 1996 uh, Winsfield County pool. Oh, that one? You know. That's still pretty world renowned. Yeah, I went down all the way to the bottom of the eight foot. Whoa. Held my breath for 45 seconds. That's pretty impressive. That's I think amazing. I saw your trophy there still. I'm not trying to get a heavy coat on this. I'm just trying to just get it covered. The focus is on paint adhesion after this. It's like we're going from its original color down to bare aluminum, and then we're gonna paint it back to its original color. This thing's actually pretty well scuffed already. Now, for anyone wondering, I do have a dryer system in the airline, so this should be dry air. Otherwise, you could run into a risk of putting moisture back in your material here. I am not a paint expert at all. I've messed up a bunch of stuff, though. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go first coat of color. Look nice. I tell you, spraying black is the hardest thing because you just, you're in the shadows and you never know where you've hit. This is tough. This is coming out pretty heavy right now, so I'm gonna try to move as light as I can. I've already got to run. Oh no. And so whoever buys this bike, if you request the engine to be changed to black, you know, I know Seth said he was really excited to do that. I did not say that at all, actually. It's purple, right? Purple. Now, if you decide to do purple, I might be down for that. <sighs> what was that about grabbing a respirator for the color coat? I forgot, I don't know. Well, I'm kind of, I feel guilty because if I have a respirator, it's like, you should have a respirator. So I shouldn't get special treatment. This is actually where my brain's at. 
Oh. So we both die instead of just one of us. Yeah, so just whoever passes out first, the other one could call 911. Oh, okay. You wishing we went ahead and polished them? Man, I, I'm, I'm on a bunch of chopper pages on Instagram, and there's some people on there that polish engines professionally, and that's a lot of work. That's incredible stuff. So look, it's looking good. It's looking good. For me, I would have had like five runs on it by now. Well, luckily we only have that one. But, you know, we'll edit that part out. Yeah. Get it in post? Yeah. There ain't no runs in post. <laughs> okay. It's good enough for a first coat. Magic. It just stuck open. I'm sure that'll happen on like the CBX engine. Yeah, black's tough. It's really satisfying to watch it lay out though. Way in there. Like what's a reflection and what's a light spot that you missed. Okay. All right, we're about to start the clear coat process. So we're gonna do the engine, the side cover, the jug, and I think that's it for now. Um, these cans don't last forever, so we'll probably go through almost an entire can on this stuff. So this has an activator in it or a hardener. So once we activate it, we have about 36 hours to actually cover everything we need and then this is just a brick at that point so um definitely gonna wear a respirator i'm gonna make seth like hold his breath for a minute we'll get a couple shots and he's getting out of here so yeah comes with a little button oh well that's that's, that's good, okay. Nice. I'm sure it's still good, for real. It's activated. That sucks. How much are these cans again? $20. Yeah, 20 bucks a can, yeah. I've never had one do that though. Maybe I pushed it too hard, I don't know. I'm shaking a drink. Getting pretty fumey. I'm gonna yeah, head out. All right, next up on the to-do list for this engine is lapping the valves. I have already gone and taken my die grinder and kind of cleaned up some of the casting imperfections in the head. And this is the last step I need to do before we go ahead and paint this thing. So first, I'm gonna to totally forget that I haven't cleaned these valves off. So now we gotta stop the video. I gotta go back, clean these things off, and then we will lap them in. The seat area is really not bad, but like anything of the era, an age just has some carbon. So we get these cleaned up. Now we're back. All right, I'm starting on the exhaust over here. 
what I'm doing is lapping it in, so creating an even surface for the valve to seal. And we're gonna start going. So I'm doing the soap thing because the back of the valve is just not perfectly smooth. So putting a little soap on there to help create a seal with the wood block and the little suction cup to actually lap these things. Otherwise you stick it on there, it slides off and it's just a pain in the butt. So I'm probably like 150 years late to the game on this, but you know, whatever. You can see there's still a little, so what we're looking for is the shiny area here. Still a couple imperfections, so we'll go a little longer. And then we'll be able to switch to a fine compound and finish this valve. All right, well we have the cylinder head masked off and we need to go ahead and and uh, get this thing cut so we can paint it. And an easy way of transferring your pattern is with a nylon mallet. Just tap around the edge. That's really easy. Another thing I've used is just a little quarter inch extension. Works well too. Or if you really want to get in there, you can kind of just like draw it across. Works just as well. And it gets the job done. Easy as that. So I'm just sitting here working, but somebody else is watching. All right, progress has been made. So we just put the case halves together. I finally received all of the necessary main bearings for this thing. So plastic aging, it looks really good. Our clearances are equal throughout the mains. And so in terms of the Yamaha bearing codes, this one is a black one, this one is blue, and this one is black. So the two outers are the same and the middle is different. So the crankshaft is of the correct size it has not been turned and I had made sure I wrote all this down and you figure this up by uh, going through the kind of codes in here so within the diagram there are codes that are written on the case the crank itself and then you look at this and then you kind of configure what bearing it should have and luckily you know the ones that this is supposed to take from the factory fit perfect and provide the right kind of clearance so as of now, I'm waiting on the connecting rods. I have those at a machine shop, just getting the small ends kind of checked out. Like I said, this thing got a little hot and I have new pins for it. So I'm just making sure those are sized perfectly. Other than that, I have all of the parts for this thing. So for now, I'm gonna start assembling things that, I, that don't involve the crank. I'm gonna start getting things back into the cases. And then as soon as I get those rods back, we're gonna get this thing together.
Okay, well, I'm working on the engine, like doing some final painting on it. And I want to add one more detail to a side cover. So to do that, I'm going to do what's called a paint fill. And that is going to be using a needle tip applicator. Real fine. That little guy right there. So I have some testers modeling paint. I've used this stuff forever. We just pour it in here. Oh, whatever. We get this guy threaded on and then I'll take you in the back here and then we're going to apply this to the actual engine cover. Now, as you see, that says Yamaha in the script right there and then that's a low area surrounding the letters. So the way that we fill this, the easy way, is this applicator. Get flipped upside down, let all the paint get down there. And then, you just squeeze, force out a little drop of paint where you want it. You gotta be careful still. But the paint will flow into the low areas. And then basically you just kind of draw. And it will self-level. Not really going to narrate this one too much just because it takes concentration. That is that. So I do have a teeny tiny little blemish right there. I'm gonna get a little uh, Q-tip with maybe some water or something and just try to clean that up. But that looks pretty good.
Now this is something I'm kind of doing on my own here. This is where the oil pump actually seats to the block itself. There's no O-ring seal. There's nothing but a machine surface and you know what? I kind of don't like that as a potential leak point for oil pressure. So I'm just going to put a tiny little film of uh, three bond on here. Hate me all you want, you know. We'll clean it. Nothing's going to get inside the galley. gallery. I just feel like this is an acceptable extra step. So I've already disassembled this pump, checked all the clearances in here, and everything looks really good. I know somebody noticed it. Just testing you guys, making sure you guys are paying attention. It's just a test. I'm gonna go get drunk. All right, let's try this again. This time with a chain. Let's go through torquing them yet again. I have already loaded the piston pin retaining clip into the inside most uh, portion of the pistons. So I do that so I can slide the pin in from the outside and have access. So you definitely want to be careful not to drop your other pin clip back in there because that sucks.
pin. Not coming out. Nothing's bound there. That feels really good. Feels good. Ready? Yep. We're not worried about that. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, grab the bottom. A little easier without the head on it. All right, I'll support if you wanna to try to get the bolt started. Come down a little if you can. Right. Sweet. Engine is in the bike. Yeah, I wanted to do it like this, just, you know, oh, keep yeah. extra room here, and then this will help with torquing everything, just having it mounted in a bike. So yeah. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and get the camshaft installed. So to do that, we'll put our rotor on, get this thing in the right position. Got our marks around here. We have our LT mark right here lined up with the cover. 
so the engine is in the correct position to go ahead and install the camshaft. Now over here is the main oil feed for the camshaft. I've already gone and just filled this entire gallery with oil, but we are gonna use a little bit of assembly lube on the surface here until it builds up pressure. Now you wanna add just the right amount so the commenters won't come after you and say you used too much and you definitely don't wanna to use too little because commenters will come at you saying you didn't use enough. So it's a delicate dance. All right, engine is in the correct position. We have our front cam chain guide in and we're ready for the cam. So we're gonna go in from this side. pin for our timing and we're going to rotate the cam gear here so we have two horizontal marks on the camshaft that's facing with level with the surface of the head here our sprockets are lined up little nubs on top and that's with our timing mark so this thing is in time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little Loctite to the bolts. We'll get that cinched down and then we'll install our rear cam chain guide. LT, marks lined up, no cam slop, we're doing good. All right, we got our seal on here. We have some three bond all the way around. Everything is lubricated. Now it's time to carefully, carefully feed this thing in. Okay, I just wanted these things down temporarily until I can go ahead and torque everything. But that is for the three bond. All right, time to go ahead and get the clutch basket installed on this thing. in here, oil up our shift mechanism.
Now I went ahead and ordered a uh, full clutch kit, but it came with steels and frictions. I've had the frictions kind of soak in an oil for a while. Try not to make a mess of everything. The springs checked out fine, so we're just going to reuse those. But here we go. So on the clutch, there's actually an arrow right here. It's actually a corresponding arrow on this side to help make sure you line this thing up correctly. So we've got that seated. Put our springs in. Start these, get just a little bit of tension on them, and then we'll slowly tighten each of them evenly across the board, a little crisscross pattern. The engine is looking fantastic right now and I'm really happy that I went ahead and did a full rebuild on it and rectified some of the issues that the water that had got into the engine had caused. So a new hone, we have fresh bearings throughout, all new gaskets and seals. This thing is going to run really well. Now there are a couple more parts that I'm waiting on for the engine like a starter clutch rebuild. But if you guys want to see exactly how a starter clutch works and how to rebuild one, I do have a specific video on that that I will link in the description. The next major steps on this bike is going to be to start the wiring process, and I'm really excited about that. I have some new tools, some new items to showcase for you guys, so definitely stay tuned for that one as we work our way through the home stretch of this build. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.